headquarters of Ramsey Solutions. It's The Ramsey Show, where people, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create amazing relationships. I am Rachel Cruz, hosting this hour with my great friend and Ramsey personality, Jade Warshaw. And we are here to answer your questions, again, about your life and your money. It is a free call anywhere in the country at 888-825-5225. All right, we're going to go to the phones at this hour. And we have, is it Deanne, possibly, in Dallas? Hey, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for taking the call. Absolutely. How can we help? So I'm I'm a new listener. I just came across you guys recently and heard you giving some great advice and hope that I can get some as well. Um, I I have a pretty significant student loan debt about two hundred and thirty thousand um, dollars. Woo! What'd you get your um, degree in? <laughs> business administration, and it's a master's too. So okay. it, it was two two degrees, but okay. still quite a quite a hefty tag. And then I have um, basically no savings or anything. So um, I'm just trying to understand how I can maybe chip away at this and get myself on track. I'm I'm 49, so I'm like I, I don't. Is know it just you? Position. Is it just you, or no. do you have a family no. married? I'm Married. Okay. Mm -hmm. And does your husband have any debt or just this one student loan you guys have together? No, just this one student loan. Okay. Well, what do you guys earn? I I, I earn about 170 in base, but I also have like a incentive, like a a annual incentive of another um, 20%, so maybe 50 to 60. And then I do have like these like stock incentives that I can cash in once a year. What can you get? But I, I've, mm-hmm. Sorry, what can you, what can you get if you cash in the stock incentives? It just depends on what the stock is trading at the time, but probably around All part. You know, twenty to thirty. Okay. What about your husband? Um, he doesn't work right now. Okay. And why is that? Sorry, I, I'm hitting you with the questions, but I'm trying to get a, a clear scope of what's going <laughs> yeah, on. Yeah, um, just ha- hasn't, but he's trying to start his own business. So um, does, I'm just, we're basically a one income family. Does right he now. feel, how long has he not been working? Uh, about two years. What? Okay. What? Is he feeling the weight of this debt? Um, I do. I don't. I know I you don't do. You're calling. So. <laughs> it sounds yeah, like you guys yeah. have kind of a separate thinking when it comes to money and debt. It, it kind of sounds like that from the way you're talking. And mm-hmm. I'm just going to be honest. I don't like that this guy hasn't been working for two years. I'm all for starting a business venture and going out on your own. But I do think that you have to be making a certain amount. You have to still be contributing financially while you do that. That's the best way. So mm-hmm. you're kind of bridging your way to it as opposed to just stopping. And who, I mean, you got to make $10 before you make 100000 So it's like, <laughs> if he's not making anything, how long is it going to be until this business really generates income that's going to help you guys become debt free? You see what I'm saying? When he oh, could go yeah. get a job I, tomorrow, yeah making $50,000, yeah. you know? Yeah, because the truth here is, is that, you know, with the extra bonuses that you were saying, I mean, you could make $230,000 in a year. So mm-hmm. here's the, here's what's wild, is what you could think about. If he went and worked, and he made $60,000. That's it. You guys could live on that. You could have this paid off in 12 months. In 12, with the, and that's not even side hustles that we that's could get right. into. That's not even cutting lifestyle. I mean, yeah, that would be cutting that's lifestyle. That's just but, him contributing. Yes. And so what you have to realize, the bigger picture here is that you can, right, if it's just you working your way out of debt, you could go and lower your uh, Mm -hmm. salary and it would take you probably three years to pay it off on yours. And that's possible. That Mm -hmm. is doable. But what we want to always give you is a plan where the fastest, most effective way to get out of debt and the clear, obvious missing piece of this is that there's not another income. Yeah. And, and again, if he's home with the kids and that's your child care, like if there's that's, reasons- That's a little different. Yeah, there there's reasons for, for people to have a one income household, but there's also people that even have that situation that choose to go to work to yeah. get it paid off, even if they want to be a stay-at-home parent. 
But for you guys, I mean, that this is, and so to me, again, the bigger problem is that you guys aren't on the same page. Because if y'all are on the same page, you could knock this out in a year versus three yeah. and a half years. And so yeah. I would, I would really encourage you guys, if you, if you stay on the line, I want to give you guys Financial Peace University. This is our seven, our nine lesson course. And if you mm -hmm. can communicate your level of stress and anxiety and fear that you're feeling or hearing that, you yeah. know, you called us. So we know that it's there and, and yeah. start to understand the why it's not this like, well, you're not doing that. And you're not, it's not a blame game. Yeah. It is a, where you're at, where am I at? And this is what I'm feeling. And my prayer is in somewhat of a marriage, you know, at, at any degree, a spouse would look at a spouse and say, oh my gosh, I don't want you to feel that way. 100%. What can we do to do, you know, to work on that? And if, and if you can't come to the table, cause some people cross their arms and like, oh, that's up to you. Mm -hmm. Then that's the, then it becomes a marriage problem and it's not a money problem. So you, you start to see these layers of what's happening, but I think it's really important for you to recognize that because you can just fix the money thing. You can get out of debt in three years if you just sacrificed right. on, like but the I, good news is she's av like even if he never contributed, right? There you're going to be sitting in that average spot where you pay it off in you know that's right twelve to twenty four months, and it's going to be gone and behind you. But we I want something more for you. Yeah, and there's something about you working together to get it gone because Absolutely. if you just say whatever, I'm going to use my income. He doesn't have to know about it. I'm going to pay this off. There's always going to be that thing between them that's like well I it's mine and it's yours yes and I, this is the time where you really get to come together as a couple and, and I would hate for them to miss out on that yep so stay on the line we're going to get you that and and my my hope would be that you guys could walk through these lessons together watch them together start these conversations because again a plan can happen so here is say you can pay this off you have a great salary you could reduce it not live on as much uh, and tell him, sorry, but I got to because this is what we're doing. Here's our new set yeah. salary for the household and we're going to have to figure it out. But if you guys can work on a team, not only does it help the money situation go so much faster paying off debt, but it helps your marriage, uh, which I think, you know, Jade, this is exactly what you wrote about in your quick yes. read that's coming out, which is money's not a math problem. Hey, got it right here. And there it is. Yeah, so you can actually pre-order it right now, you guys. It is brand new. It comes out December 5th, which is coming up, that's which is right. so exciting. So it's only $10. And if you pre-order, they actually get an exclusive Q&A with you. That's right. Is they that get right? a Q&A, yes. Yeah, so you can do that. Um, and, I, and I love this, you guys, because it's a quick read. And so for, for you all out there that are like, oh my gosh, it's kind of intimidating to dive into all mm -hmm. of this. And I don't know where to start. This is honestly the perfect first step. Because Read it in two hours. Yes, you're gonna you're gonna relate to it. It's gonna it speaks exactly to the problem that so many people are having. Is that personal finance? It's it's twenty percent head knowledge. It's eighty percent behavior. We are the ones that we have to control. And gosh, Jay does a beautiful job walking through that. So go to RamseySolutions.com slash store. Pre-order that quick read. Money's not a math problem because that's what we talk about all the time on this show because it's the truth. It's a, it's a we problem, right? It's a That's me problem. Right. It's, it's what you, you believe. Problem. It's what you believe. Absolutely. So make sure to check that out again. RamseySolutions.com slash store. Hey, if you're in over your head with student loans and tired of getting calls from collection agencies, if private student loan debt is taking away your financial peace and you don't see any way out, you need Y Refi. They're not a debt settlement company and they're not connected to a bank. Y Refi refinances defaulted private student loans that other places won't touch and gives you a custom loan built for you based on your ability to pay. So when you refinance your private student loan debt with Y Refi, you'll have a payment you can afford with a low fixed interest rate you couldn't get anywhere else to help you stick to your budget and work the debt snowball. And you can save thousands of dollars. To learn more about this custom refinancing option and a lump sum payoff option you could qualify for after 24 months, call 844-2-RAM or go to yrefi.com slash Ramsey.
Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. We are taking your calls. Again, it's a free call anywhere in the country at 888-825-5225. Up next, we have Jack in Boston. Hey, Jack. Welcome to the show. Hey, uh, thank you guys for having me on. Absolutely. Thanks for calling in. How can we help? So I am a recent college graduate. I'm 22. I just graduated this past May, um, and I started working this June. When I, you know, was originally making plans for this year as I'm, you know, entering the workforce, I had taken a job in in the Boston area, um, and so had a few of my college buddies. And so there's three of us, and we signed a lease, and that's currently where I am. Um, after signing the lease, I actually received a second job offer, in which case I work remotely. Um, I ended up taking that offer and, um, basically I'm, I'm calling to ask, you know, because I work remote, um, I spend about $1,200 a month in rent. And then, you know, of course there's utilities and a bunch of stuff just cause the area is expensive. How beneficial do you guys think it would be to move back in with my parents to help me clear some of my student loan and car payments? Hmm. How much student loan debt is it? And how much is your car? So the student loans are about 27. Uh, the car is about 22. And I make 72. And you make how much? 70? 72, yeah. 72, okay. I, If it were me... I think that you have a great income starting out. I mean, to make 72 starting out at 22 years old, I think is excellent. I don't think that your rent is especially high. It's not like you're like, oh, I'm spending $2,000 a month. Um, I personally would not move back with my parents. The only question that I was, what I thought you were going towards is I have these roommates and it's super loud and I can't get any work done. Like I thought you were going to go down that pathway, but it doesn't seem like that's the issue. Um, I think that you can buckle down and pay off this debt. Um, your $22,000 car is, is, I don't love that, but it's within the threshold. So I, I'm not mad. Sure. How quickly, yeah. have you done a budget? Do you know how much money you have left over after rent, after groceries, after gas that you could put towards debt? Yeah, sure. So, you know, each month after I make all my payments, I save around 800 to to $1,000 already. Oh, mm-hmm. good. That's good. Yeah, Jack, okay, so this is always kind of a tough question because mathematically, it's like, you know, you would think our answer would be like, absolutely, whatever you can Mm -hmm. to reduce expenses and throw as much of the debt, yada, yada, yada. But what that doesn't factor in by just kind of like using that escape and using that plan is that there is something to be said about that Jack signed up for the student loan and Jack signed up for the car loan. And so Jack needs to figure out how to do this. And after you do it, there is something about this dignity as a young adult that you're like, oh yeah, I had a problem and I solved it. Now, could part of that solution be you move home with your parents and there's a very strict plan that you're only gonna be there for 12 months and whatever, whatever, whatever. Sure, right, it's not, I'm not one of these people that's like never ever do that. But, but it's not I do, dire straits. But I do lean towards Jay that there's a part of me, Jack, that I'm like, I think you're I think you're a grown man. And I think that you can figure this out. And I think you could take a side hustle at night to bring in some more money. Um, I just was doing an every dollar webinar yesterday and we talked about side hustles. And there's so many people oh, that yeah. were making anywhere from eight hundred to two thousand dollars a month doing a side hustle. So I think there's ways to earn extra income and um, again, if you had a really diligent plan and it was, again, something that you're like, this is, I, you know, there's a, a time frame. Yeah. I know what I'm doing and I'm going to do it and be done mm-hmm. and get out. Like you could, but I don't know, Jack, there's a part of me that I'm like, I, I think that I just you're like you having think you your freedom. It. Yeah. And not moving back in with mom and dad. It just does something to an adult mind yeah. when, and I always use this example. It's kind of a stupid one, but when you open up the refrigerator and there's no milk, and you don't have Brett and you're like, oh man, I have to be an adult and I have responsibilities and I have to figure out how to make life work. And there is just that extra safety net when you move home naturally. Yeah, mom's gonna go get the milk. Yeah, that, that like, you know, you're gonna be taken care yeah. of, which is fine, but I think it stunts a level of this personal responsibility and and being an adult. And if you start dating and like, I don't know, just all this stuff, just moving back Look, home. the dating. <laughs> it's the dating for me, Rachel, because I would be thinking the same thing, Jack. Like if I met you and I'd be like, Jack's great. And then I'm like, 
wait, but we're going to your mom's house. There would be just this little piece of me that I'd be like, oh, man. So for that reason, I, this is like Shark Tank. For that reason alone, I'm out. But the other thing I wanted to ask you just about your money is, are you contributing to a 401k through your work? I am, yep. So my employer matches 4%. So I put 4% to 401k and then another 6% into a Roth IRA. Okay, so just a, a piece of advice, and this is the way we mm -hmm. teach. Right now, you're giving away 10% of your income. And if it were me, I would pause that temporarily while and get that money back in my hands so I can quickly pay off this debt. By the way, even if you did choose to go to your parents' house and live, I would still do that because the whole point is let's get this debt wiped up as quickly as possible. And then when your debt's gone, you'll have so much more money that you can be investing another 5% when the time comes to be investing 15%. And I love that way more for you. Do you happen to have any safe? Oh, do, do I get rid of him? And by the way, Jack, if you have any savings laying, laying around, I would also throw that towards your debt. Because something tells me, Rachel, that he is a guy that might have a little bit of savings yeah, in a so, little yeah, pile somewhere. If there's somewhere. anything extra, Jack, yeah, just throw it on this debt. And I think that you can, I think you can do this. I think you can get out without mm -hmm. having to move back home. I understand, again, the math side of it. So if that's what you choose to do, it's not a completely wrong decision. Right. But there is something in the holistic picture of who you are as a whole person that I think is, there's something about just being on your own and figuring out that I think it's great. Mm -hmm. All right, up next we have Gracie in Salt Lake City. Hey, Gracie, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for taking my call. Absolutely. How can we help? I have a little question because my, well, okay. So, sorry, I'm kind of I'm talking in circles here. So I'm wondering if I should get life insurance for my daughter. She's 10 months old. Um, my mom got life insurance for me when I was a baby, which is awesome. But my husband doesn't have any life insurance at all. And so he's kind of like, it doesn't matter. And I'm kind of like, well, but it would be nice. And um, I just want to hear your yeah, take on that. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so a rule of thumb is that your insurance and your investments should always be separate. And usually when it comes to children getting life insurance, there's a level of whole life in there. There's a, an investment vehicle within it and, it. and it ends up being an entire financial product that mm -hmm. that is is always, a, it's not a good product. Not essentially, because we what you want to think about with life insurance is that if someone is dependent upon your income, you want life insurance. So your husband needs life insurance, Gracie. You, even if you're a stay-at-home mom, need life insurance. But we recommend term life and go down that path. So anything like there's like Gerber insurance, like uh, and again, a lot of Terrible. whole life. Yeah, a lot of whole life policies will market to children and they're like, oh yeah, well, if you put this in and then it's going to grow to this. And I mean, it, it, it's, it's this entire, honestly, it's the whole product is just crap because the investment inside is not great. And your, your baby doesn't need life insurance. Right. They're the not whole dependent purpose, upon her. The whole purpose is if something, God forbid, was to happen to you or your husband, you want to make sure she's taken care of. Cause right now you guys to provide everything for her. So if your baby were to have life insurance, if God forbid something happened to the baby, that's then you guys would reap the money from it. And that doesn't make sense. It makes sense that if something were to happen to you or your husband, there would be a ton of money there waiting for her that whoever her caretaker would be, mm -hmm. she would be just fine. Yeah. So it's kind of like flipping your mind on why do we take this out and what's it really for? Yes. And again, people will okay. throw in the whole investment side. But again, if you open up a whole life policy and she goes and tries to ca and she cashes it out at 18 or something and, and changes it up, um, what she could have had if you had just invested it in a mutual fund under like an UPMA account or you even put into a college fund for her, like a 529, would be leaps and bounds more money. You would gain way more of a rate of return and interest on that versus the crappy investments that sit inside of life insurances. So it's a great question, Gracie. Again, she does not need life insurance. You and your husband need life insurance and term life and we always recommend Xander insurance so if you go to RamseySolutions.com you can find them on our site um, they're the they're where we get our term life insurance my husband and I that's right because uh, they have great rates they shop all different services it's not just one provider that they look at and so life insurance to all of you listening if someone is dependent upon your income you need life insurance
Well, you've all played the telephone game. The first person whispers a message to the second person who whispers it to the third and so on around the table until the original message has completely changed. Multiply that confusion by 100 if you run a business with different software systems that don't talk to each other. That's why there's NetSuite by Oracle. In the early days of Ramsey, we were using different systems for all of our business units. We needed one single source for accurate data. NetSuite was the software we used to optimize and take us to the next level. NetSuite gave us the visibility into all of our numbers so that we could communicate across departments and plan ahead better. And as we grew, it scaled with us. NetSuite worked for Ramsey and it will make a difference for your business too. Join the more than 34,000 customers who trust NetSuite to help make them smarter and make better decisions and level up their operations. To learn more, get a free product tour at netsuite.com slash Ramsey. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. The Ramsey Show question of the day is brought to you by Neighborly, your hub for home services for over 40 years. Neighborly has an exclusive network of trained local service providers backed by the Neighborly Done Right promise. So if it's not done right, Neighborly will make it right. Visit neighborly.com slash Ramsey today to learn more. Love it. Today's question comes from Amy in Louisiana. She says, how do you navigate social social situations while trying to stick to a budget? I recently volunteered to help with a friend's baby shower, and my husband and I agreed upon a certain number to spend on it. The girl whose shower it was connected me to another friend who wanted to help host, who I had never met. In the planning conversation, I asked her what her budget was and told her the number I could help with. She said she didn't have a budget, but my contribution was fine. Long story short, the shower ended up being bigger and more expensive than I expected. It's way over my budget, and she asked if I could reimburse her to pretty, uh, pretty if I could help reimburse her to pretty close her half, so to close up. Like, close the gap. There's a typo there. This is awkward. I feel like it tried to set expectations, but here we are. Help. Oh, jeez. Wow. Look, I almost lost it whilst reading, obviously. <laughs> Here's the thing. Um, you told her from the beginning. Yeah. Rachel, co correct me if I'm wrong, because this, look, this is what Jade go, would Jade, do. Go, Jade, go. Go, Jade, If go. I told you from the beginning I can spend $200, then I am spending $200. And if she, who did not have a budget, said, that's great. Thank you. You know, whatever your contribution is, that's fine. If she already said fine, then at that point, if she chose to buy other things, yep, that's I her. am not reimbursing you. Matter of fact, I'm going to go like, well, why would you spend more? Like, I would be asking her questions as to why she chose to spend more when... Yep. She could have easily just matched my budget and it been even 200, 200. Yes. Whoa. I know. It was, so Amy, I mean, honestly, you did such a, you were so wise in it. I'm yeah. like, you knew going in, Yeah. here's my budget. Talk to your husband about it. You had a set amount. You communicated that. Mm -hmm. And the other per person chose to do something different. And that's not your problem. It's sure That's not. not your problem. You set expectations. So Honestly, if it's a girl you've never met, you probably will never see her again. Mm -hmm. um, so I wouldn't worry too much. Knowing myself, <laughs> I'm probably more I'm probably more of a people pleaser. So I feel like I would even find the text thread. Hopefully, like what she, and send the screenshot. Yeah, and just yep. say, hey, so sorry, my husband and I had we had you know put this money aside. This is all we could do. Uh, I mentioned that to you earlier. Here's a, you know here's a shot yeah. of our conversation. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Um, let me know if there's anything else I can do to help, not money related or something. But yeah, I, I mean, ugh. the silver lining is this is a person she's never met. Now, if this is like, if this is a friend, a friend, then that is really awkward. But I think, but again, I think you have to, you have to stick to your guns and you, no, yeah. if you had not communicated an expectation and That's you different. show up and it's all, 
then that is like, oh man, but on the front end. So you guys, everyone listening or watching right now, this is a great lesson that if you go into an event, a social event, which happens all the time, yeah, whether it's wedding showers or uh, weddings with a wedding gift, mm-hmm. uh, a teacher presents, uh, a lot of our classes will pull money together to get one teacher gift. Yeah. And you know, if, if there's any type of group situation and you have a set amount of money, don't be, That's don't it. feel any level of, I, I feel bad that I have a set amount, communicate it and say it out loud because it's going to give you peace. It's going to give you control. Mm -hmm. And the more practice you have talking about money in social situations, I think the easier it becomes. It can feel awkward at first, but. And I think probably one other thing, and maybe who knows if she did it or not, but like as, as the planning commences, just being a reminder, remember, I'm only going to be able to spend 200. Like, so she's suggesting, oh, it would be so cool if we did like these little balloon thingies. Okay. But remember, I can only spend $200. Oh, but like, oh, I found this great little caterer. Yes. But remember, I can only spend $200. Like as long as you make that, like the mantra that you're saying over and over, then there's no room for anybody. Yeah. And it's so funny, Jade. I'm like, you know, these just social scenarios, whether it's kid birthday parties or again, showers Mm -hmm. or I mean, anything that has a level of um, a what's it called? Like not like a group funding. Yeah. But like the vibe, like what's like like the aesthetics. Yes. yes, You want the aesthetics to be beautiful, a 40th birthday party, you know, big celebrations, all of that. You know, there is this balance of you want to celebrate people. So if you're putting something on for someone, a good friend, you obviously, you want to celebrate that person. That's or if right. it's you throwing it for X, Y, and Z in your family. That's right. You want it to be nice. Like, I get all of that. And Otherwise, you want, you don't want it to be volunteer. Beautiful. You want it to be beautiful. But also, you guys, it's just gotten out of control. The expectations of all these events. It's crazy. It's crazy. So it's not normal. Like, just so you know that, it's not normal to have food trucks at your two-year-old's birthday party no. with bounce houses. Like, it's just, that's not normal. But it's become normal. So we have this expectation that this is what our life should look like to some degree. And it's not. I heard plenty of stories about um, like bachelorette parties. Oh my gosh. Where it's like. Because you guys are getting married right now. I listen to girls that are getting married and they're in the bachelorette parties and the wedding showers and the weddings. And And there's a trip. If there's a trip involved. Oh yeah. There always is now. I was like, only the Kardashians did that. Like when I was getting married 15 years ago, I was like, people didn't go on these like no. extravagant trips. And like, at least we didn't. You have to spend, you have to fork over it's, some major cash to be in a bridal pa- party these days. It's real. It's really, I wish we all could just like, all the women in America could lock arms and just make a pact <laughs> that like, we won't do this to each other. No like more. we were all just together. Yeah. Our big birthday party, everything like. We, it's okay. It's okay. We're not, we're not, we're not doing this. Yeah. I'm not doing it. It's hard. So, so hard. But again, clearly verbalizing what you can do is wise. It's not awkward. It's actually very, very smart for you and your money. That's right. Good job, Amy. All right. Um, next we have Joey in Manhattan. Hey, Joey, welcome to the show. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you so much for taking my call. Absolutely. How can we help? Um, Yeah, so I can explain a little bit of my situation, um, but essentially I am 23 years old. I make about $60,000 a year, and I want to save up for a house. And I know that kind of like the traditional rule is to pay cash for it, Um, but my parents struggled with debt, you know, as I was growing up. So I'm a really big saver, and for that reason, you know, I try to prioritize um, Roth IRA, you know, different stocks that I have. I also have life insurance, which I'm sure uh, you both have some opinions on. Um, but I guess to boil it down, my question is really, how much should I be saving to buy something? Because I'm a little bit against renting, even though I know that that's totally okay if that still yeah. allows me to save. I mean, I love that you're thinking about all of this and you're trying to make smart choices with your money. I think I would applaud you on that. Uh, you know, you mentioned paying cash for a house. Yeah, if you have the patience and the funding to save up and pay the whole thing full out in cash, I think that's great. But um, if you don't want to do that, that's also fine. You know, I'd look for some some situation where you're paying at least 20% down since you really were hoping to go the cash option. Um, at least 20% down, I'd look for a 15-year fixed conventional rate mortgage. And I'm just, if you don't mind, I would just love to poke a few holes in how you're doing this because I think you might be able to do this in a more effective way. Do you yeah, mind? Absolutely. All right. Yeah, no, go ahead. So you mentioned stocks, that you had? Yes. Can you tell me a little bit more about that and how much is there? Yeah, so I have about 8,000 kind of spread across um, regular stocks that I just invested on my own via like the Robinhood app. So 
different things like Apple, Facebook, uh, Tesla, and just like big kind of like famous stocks that I know kind of will do well over time. Yeah. In addition to that, I do invest um, just like on the app called Acorns. I have my Roth IRA through them. So I have another 12,000 just kind of invested in like one of their aggressive kind of sets. So it's just different stocks that they kind of pick for me and manage. Okay. What um, percentage do you put towards that? It's not a percentage. I have, well, I don't know it off the top of my head. I do normally about a thousand a month, depending okay. on where the rest My is point involved. in saying all this is you might have a little bit more to put towards this than you think. I'd probably stop with the stocks. And if you wanted to get here sooner than later, I'd probably put some of that stock money towards saving for a house, especially if you already have three to six months saved. Anything that you save up past that is really going to help you get that down payment quickly. So if it were me, if I had those six months saved, then I would probably probably liquidate those stocks, put it towards a down payment. And if there was any other cash laying around above three to six months, I'd use that to start building that savings for a down payment as well. Yeah. Any non-retirement, Joey can go towards that. It's great. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything, from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Go to Blinds.com now and save up to 50% off everything site-wide. Visit Blinds.com today to learn more. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I am Ramsey personality, Rachel Cruz, hosting this hour with my friend and Ramsey personality, Jade Warshaw. And Thanksgiving is coming up, you guys. And I wrote a kid's book called I'm Glad for What I Have. And so the idea of gratitude and contentment and all of that is is so key. And, and again, it's kind of part of the, the holiday that we are in even this week. So if you have not had a chance to grab a copy for your little ones or the little ones in your life, I'm glad for what I have. Uh, learning, learning contentment and learning, spoiler alerts, that God's love is the thing that fulfills you. Apparently, I haven't said yes. that enough. And some of my Amazon reviews were like, it's religious. They didn't tell us. And I was like, oh, gosh, sorry. Spoiler alert. It's God that fills, uh, <laughs> that fills us and brings deep contentment. But these little, these little animals, you know, go through uh, understanding that their stuff is not bad, but they start to believe if I can just have more and more and more. I'm going to be happier and happier and happier, Yeah, which we can fall into that mindset as adults too. And at the end of the day, we all know that it just doesn't fulfill us the way we think it does. So I'm yeah. glad for what I have. My new children's book, you can check that out at RamseySolutions.com slash store. Love right, it. Up next, we have Ryan in Raleigh, North Carolina. Hey, Ryan, welcome to the show. Hey, how are you guys? Thanks we are, for having me. Absolutely. Thanks for calling in. How can we help? Um, so I have a few questions um i guess i have a pretty decent amount of money saved um and i was kind of wondering how to go about making it more of like a passive income um and uh just seeing if there's anything better i could be doing with my money than what i'm doing now mm. yeah that's a great question okay so how much money do you have saved uh about just a little over one hundred fifty thousand. okay and what's it in now 
Uh, mostly CDs. Okay. And do you have uh, do you have any debt, Ryan? No. No debt. And do you have and, and any other savings besides this? Any retirement? Um. Well, that's money that I just have set aside that I don't touch at all. Um, so I guess that would be like towards that, yeah. Okay, but you don't. Do you have like a Roth IRA or a four hundred one k? Oh yes, yes, yeah, uh, yeah, and I have a TSP also. Cool. Okay, and how much money do you make a year? Um, now not too much. Um, I took a pay cut. Um, I'd say like fifty thousand now. Okay. Okay. Perfect. And what's your living situation? Are you renting? Do you own a home? Where are you at in th- with that? Um, I'm in the military now, so okay. I don't have, um, so I don't own anything now. Just okay. military housing? Yes. Okay. What branch are you in? Uh, the Army. Okay, great. Well, thank you for your service and sacrifice doing that we we greatly appreciate it so yeah this is a this is a good amount right i'm very impressed that you saved one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. you have it in a cd and i think you're right i think you can put it somewhere yeah uh that can actually get you a little bit more make make more i'm just curious when you said yeah. passive income did you have something in mind like is there something that you were thinking of that you wanted to run by um i mean i've only looked at like property really but like i like other than that like nothing really um but I, I don't know like what the best thing to be doing with that is um, i can tell you I what like i might do. do yeah so i'm assuming you have no debt yeah no debt and other than like this is the only savings you have so what i would if this, this is what jade would do i would probably set aside what i think my expenses are for about six months and i'd put that separate like in a high yield savings account and then if it were mm-hmm. me, how long do you plan on being in the military in the way that you're like hopping around? Um, I guess it kind of depends on like how it, how it goes. Um, I probably my years. next goal would be setting aside enough money that when I'm done with the military or where I'm more stable, where I could buy a home in cash. OK, so I'd probably invest it like you said five years, I'd probably just throw it in an S&P 500 account and let it sit. And in five, six years when I'm ready for it, chances are it will have grown. And mm-hmm. I would, that's or at what, least use it for a, for a big down payment. A big down payment. Yeah. Yep. Because Ryan, I think, I think the first goal would be, you know, owning your, owning a home uh, is one of the big pieces of your financial picture. And so we want you to be able to do that. And then eventually own it outright. So what Jade is saying is is right, that if you can just buy it with cash outright, your primary home, then obviously that's not going to be passive income like your question, but it starts to get you towards a financial stability. Because if you just dream for a second and think, oh my gosh, if you put 50% or 75% or 100% down on your home, and even if you took out a small mortgage and you paid it off, yeah, then you're that same ability to save Ryan that you have now is still probably going to be there in who you are. That, that's a part of you. You're a natural saver. You're looking for ways to make money. You're looking for ways, you're even asking about passive income. And then from there is where you can say, okay, I'm going to put some away for retirement, but also, yeah, maybe I do go and, and I, and I get, and I get a property, buy a property yeah. in cash and flip it and maybe resell it. And you can kind of be in that game with cash or hold on to it and rent it out. But all of those things are secondary to your primary residence. That would be the next big spot. But I'm I'm with Jade. I mean, a Vanguard account, yeah, putting it in an index fund like an S&P 500, it's going to be better than a CD. You'll get a better rate of return yeah. on your money. Yeah. Uh, but so that's that's probably, I would do exactly what Jade said. I mean, I, I lean towards that. And it's not as like sexy and flashy as passive income. Like, right. But is it but really passive? But, but it's stability. Like, we're, like you're setting yeah, yourself but, up mm-hmm. for the future. And er, how... Did you tell us how old you were? How old are you? I'm 27. 27. Okay. So yeah, I mean, there, it's plenty of time to do all of this. And yeah, I mean, you could look up in 15 years and have some great cash to get into the real estate game and do it without risk mm-hmm. with cash and all of that. But I think at this place, I think the next wise step um, once all this settles. And, and again, the S&P 500, I mean, if you get some growth, you'll pay some taxes on it, but you could take it out and use it if you wanted to, yeah. right? But I would probably just let it sit there because you don't have a lot of, you know, you, you may not have a lot of expenses. You have no debt. Mm-hmm. There's no real reason for major passive income right now. That's right. Would you, would you agree? Yeah, I agree. 
Yeah. But, um, but again, I like where your mind is at because I think that's more of a long-term play to be looking into that realm. But I think that it's going to be sooner for you, Ryan, than some people listening because you've set yourself up really 100%. well. 100%. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Good no job. debt and $150,000. So well done. Well done. Up next, we have Adam in Pittsburgh. Hey, Adam, welcome to the show. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Absolutely. How can we help? Um, so my wife um, is uh, – employed by a company that um, grants stock to uh, all employees. And she's been with that company for quite a while now. And as uh, we've gained actually quite a bit of stock and I was unsure what to do with that, um, with that stock and it has actually come to the point where we have enough to pay off the mortgage to our house. Amazing. And it's, it's <laughs> we should if that was a worthwhile sale to pay down the mortgage essentially one two three yes, yes. <laughs> okay. yeah for sure adam i mean the company stock you know we always i mean i, I think it's a nod to them that's a great thing yeah. but you're stuck into one stock and Enron mm -hmm. is always the name that oh, comes gosh. to my head, right? Yes. And so there's always, right. always going to be risk, even if it's a company you work for. And even if it's a great company, you're mm -hmm. still not diversified. Mm -hmm. So we always do recommend not right. to put so much into company stock. So if you guys right. have that much, I would, Adam, I would cash it out, pay off your home. Oh, it's going to feel so great. How much is oh, it? Man. How much do you guys yeah. have left? Uh, it's about 200 grand. Come on. Amazing, Adam. Do you guys have any other debt? But it, it's a sub, it's a sub 3% interest rate. And that's the only reason where I'm, I'm waffling on that deci decision because, you know, maybe that is a nice sum for, you know, retirement one day, but I don't know if that outweighs, you know, not having that mortgage at this point in time. But yeah, right, I guess, right. Uh, I, I hear what you're saying, I but I my question. Yeah, no, I hear what you're saying, but I also think that you can get a better rate of return by you guys putting money away for your retirement and not dependent upon the employee stock. That's right. That's um, right. So I would put retirement in you and your wife's control mm -hmm. in you know 401k or a Roth IRA that's more diversified in mutual funds and go that route, have your house paid off and you guys can throw so much yeah. money at retirement and have an incredible retirement. So well done, Adam. Very well good. done. Thanks, Jay, for being a great co-host. Thanks to all guys in the booth for making this show happen. Thank you, America. This is The Ramsey Show. Solutions. This is The Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. I am Rachel Cruz, hosting this hour with my great friend and Ramsey personality, Jade Warshaw. And we are, again, answering your questions about your life, your money, your relationships, your career, anything and everything. You give us a call at 888 825 Five two two five. All right, we're going to go to Vancouver with Giuliano. Giuliano, what a great name. Welcome to the show. How can we help? Hi there. Thank you so much for having me on. Long time listener, first time caller. Um, I had a question. So um, we're actually moving to Indiana in about six months. We're just waiting for my immigration papers to oh. go through. I had the pleasure of marrying an American. Okay, um, so great. Well, welcome to America. Thank Giuliano. You <laughs> okay, so uh so you guys are getting married, you're moving down to Indiana. Yeah. And uh our court so we have a townhouse in Vancouver and um the market here has just been crazy. We've done very well just by owning. So we're looking to enter the US with approximately three hundred thousand US and um I'm looking to try and purchase a house that's under that limit in order to be mortgage free. We're both twenty nine. 
Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, whereas, whereas, whereas my wife's pushing a little bit to maybe have a little bit nicer of a kitchen or a slightly bigger property and kind of go more up to the 350, 400 range and have a small mortgage. Sure. Huh? Um, my, my big concern there, obviously, I'm, I value the, the advice you guys give is to try to be mortgage free. Um, but I'm about five months into starting my own business. And uh, the idea of being mortgage free gives me peace of mind knowing that I don't have to maintain such high monthly debts. So how do I talk to my wife and I guess compromise or get her to see my, my view. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how much, how much are you guys going to be bringing in a year? Do you know? Uh, I, I have an opportunity to work for a bank in the U S which would bring in about a hundred thousand, but I'm currently trying to pursue my own business, which, uh, I'm, I'm trying to make the same amount, but it's, it's only been about four months. Okay. What are you make? Sorry. What are, are you making anything from your own business? Not yet, no. Um, but our product goes live in about a month or so. Okay, that's great. And what's your wife make? Uh, my wife's a stay-at-home mom. We have three okay. lovely children. Okay, so great. Um, have you guys look? Have you looked to see what I'm sure you have? Kind of what the market is for around under that three hundred thousand dollar mark. Yeah, like in in my own opinion, I'm I believe I can compromise a little bit more, and for around two fifty, the home size meets all of our family needs. It's really, I guess, just the trimmings and slightly bigger size of properties. What my wife's wanting for the the family. What does two fifty get you? Be specific. Uh, a, a four bedroom, three bathroom, two thousand square foot home on okay. maybe a four thousand square foot lot. Okay, and how old? Like how? Like fairly old or. Two- 15 to 20 years old. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, man. I, I don't think I don't think either of you are wrong. I was going to say, me start I can understand that. where your wife is coming from. I can't. And but, but I will, like, the, the reason I understand where she's coming from is because you could afford, you can afford easily to do that. Yes, like if you yes. have $300,000 in cash, taking on a 50, 50 or $100,000 mortgage is, you'll mm-hmm. be just fine. Yes. And... Yeah. I honestly think that it could be, this is a, I'm going to do a little bit of girl math here. I honestly (laughs) think it could be a little worth it because if it's a newer, nicer property, there may be less spent in repairs when you first get in. So it's like, do you want to pay for less headache up front or do you want to pay less? And when you come in, it's like, all right, we got to switch the carpet. All right, we got to do something yeah. about this weird tile in the we're gonna, bathroom. We're going to want to replace the kitchen cabinets in yeah. two years. We're going to we're gonna want to do all these things when it could be more done on the front end with a very small mortgage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm voting. Can I place my vote? Can I put my ballot in? Absolutely. I'm, yes. I yes. think I'm voting team wife. <laughs> okay. This is only because, well, let me, before I vote team wife, do you have any other debt? Uh, no other debt. No. Do you have any money saved besides uh, the 300k? Have tw- we have twenty five thousand saved. It's not earmarked Good. for retirement or education. It's just general just saving. Sa- yeah, and just an emergency. Let's call it emergency fund. They're actually yes, and and there is a little bit of debt actually. Um, it's just the debt that I'm accruing from starting my business. What's that? But we're looking to uh, currently about forty thousand. Oh, that's not um, a little bit. No, so the the money we're entering with the U.S. at three hundred, I've factored in that we're going to be paying this debt down as well. Well, what I would do is I take some of that. I take forty thousand of the three hundred k and pay it off completely. Because if you want to talk cool. about going into your new business, whenever that is, it sounds like you're trying to build that bridge now. That for me would provide more stress. Having debt on the business would give me more stress than having $50,000 on a home. Because with your home, at least it's a forced savings account. Every time you make a payment, more goes into the equity, right? And more goes onto that principal. But with this debt hanging around, I'm sure there's an interest rate attached. Plus there's just the stress of, oh my gosh, I've got to make this thing successful because if not, we're left with this price tag and working from that place of debt is never what I would recommend. You're going to make completely different decisions. Do you see what I'm saying? Like that is going to affect how you run your business more than you could possibly imagine. And comma, I want to make sure that you're not continuing to add debt as Mm -hmm. you start this business. Right. I I hear you. So, so to summarize, you're saying pay down the accrued debt and then pay transfer off that essentially over, pay, pay off and yes. transfer the debt over to a small mortgage that is manageable monthly. 
I'm saying take the 300,000, pay off 40, so now you're left with 260. And then now this does change a little bit what size home you get. So I can't, I wouldn't necessarily. It's not swapping debt for debt. It's not swapping debt from debt. But it is using, yes, that cash that you have from the sale of your home in Canada Mm -hmm. to help pay off the business debt. And then I think because of that choice, yeah, there's, you're taking on what we had said earlier, anywhere from 50 to 100,000 may go down to 50. Maybe now you max out a $50,000 mortgage and that's what we're going to do. And I think that is going to, that's going to give you a, totally different mindsets mm-hmm. um and and yeah on the on the business side i mean i think jade is right we we talked to so many small business owners through entree leadership a department here at rmc solutions and help walk with them and one of the phrases and again we're pretty countercultural. i mean even talking about taking on yeah. a small you know <laughs> we understand all that yeah. but but moving at the speed of cash it, it changes it changes who you are. It changes how you go home at night. It changes your sleep. It changes the anxiety that you feel towards a small business. When there's not that risk yeah. there, you're going to move slower. It's not as fun and as exciting. And people, what we find, especially with entrepreneurs, they have so many ideas. And a yeah. lot of them are great. And hopefully they all work. But sometimes they get stuck with a bill with something that didn't work. And they're having to pay for it for years to come. Mm-hmm. So just be thoughtful on that. So, yeah, we're, we're like half team wife. I'd go half that yeah, that earmark, fifty thousand maybe, fifty thousand on a mortgage, and you guys can pay it off quickly and get a better home uh, that you're not going to have to keep up with as much. I think that's okay. great. Well, thanks so much for calling in. This is the Ramsey Show. Hey guys, it's Rachel Cruz. It's open enrollment season, so it's a great time to explore your healthcare options for next year. If you feel tied down by your budget, check out Christian Healthcare Ministries. CHM is not health insurance. It's a faith-based health cost-sharing ministry that has helped members take care of nearly $10 billion in healthcare costs. CHM is an affordable alternative to insurance that gives you the freedom and empowers you to live out your values. And you can join at any time. So find out more at chministries.org slash budget. show. I am Rachel Cruz hosting this hour with Ramsey personality Jade Warshaw. And what's fun about being here at the Ramsey Solutions headquarters is all the Ramsey personalities work here. You know, we're in and out of meetings. We see each other in the hall and we um, we're talking about a video that we saw recently, which we'll, we will show you guys here in a second. But the perfect person to talk about this was walking by. Ken Coleman. Yeah, I got the bat signal. It's very exciting. Ken, come in here (laughs) and join us for this segment because there was a video that was published. Was it was it Bloomberg that? Maybe Business Insider. Do you guys know? I mean, it was just everywhere. It was was everywhere. Okay, yeah. It it was a it was a TikTok video of a young girl. um, We're gonna say Gen Z. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she was struggling. With the reality of what working full time meant, Uh-oh. and how it felt nine to five, nine to five, the exhaustion. So let's go ahead and uh, play play that video, sweet girl. I know I'm probably just being so dramatic and annoying, but this is my first job, like my first nine to five job after college, and I'm in person, and I'm commuting in the city, and it takes me forever to get there. There's no way I'm gonna be able to afford living in the city right now, so that's off the table. Like, if I was able to walk to work, and it w- it'd be fine, but I'm not. So it literally takes me like I leave here, like I get on the train at 7:30, and I don't get home till like 6:15 earliest, and then like I don't have time to do anything. I don't. I want to shower eat my dinner and go to sleep I don't have time or energy to cook my dinner either like I don't have energy to work out like that's out the window like 
I'm so upset. Oh my god. Oh Nothing my. to do with my job at all, but just like the nine to five schedule in general is crazy. Being in the office nine to five, like if it was remote, you get off at five and you're home and everything's fine. But like I'm not home. It takes me long to get home and like like people that drive to the office, like it doesn't you don't get off at five. And I know it could be worse. I know I could be working longer, but like I literally get off, it's pitch black, like, I don't have energy, how do you have friends, like, how do you have time to, like, meet, like, a guy, I don't know, like, how do you have time for, like, dating, like, I don't have time for anything, and I'm, like, so stressed out. I just want to oh hug her. <laughs> okay, first things her. first. She gets home around 6.15, and all she has time for is eating and showering. I want to know how long of a shower she's taking. Does she have kids? That's a long shower. That's a, oh, I'm like, Jay, where, do you oh, have kids? Jay, no, she has no concept of time. I don't have time to work out, to see boys. What, to at see 6.15, boys. what are you doing? Wait, though. Wait, though, Ken, because I kind of... There were parts of me that kind of felt what she was saying a little bit. What part? Because I've always worked from home. I've always run business from home, which means like you get the, you have the ability to tweak your schedule very easily. You don't have to ask anybody. If I say I'm going to start my day at 9 a.m. or if Tuesday I go, I got to take my daughter to daycare. I'm going to start my day at 10 a.m. and then I'm going to come back at 9 p.m. and f- make up that hour. I can do that. But when you when you have a nine to five job, it's like, no, you're here from nine to five that is your block so it is a lot less freedom in that way and when i took this job it was my first nine to five i i felt this shell shock like i was like oh wow this is a big block of time i've always blocked my time in smaller chunks you're very sweet that you what you're saying is not the same as what she's saying it's not the same she's but saying I kind of when got she gets it. home at 6 15 all she has time for is a shower she and can't even make maybe she a can't. quick but microwave what she's meal really yeah. saying she can't is even she's boil shook. noodles she's, she's tired. shook by the, the schedule tired. what she's really saying is she's weak no no, no this is a weak-minded young girl <laughs> no he's <laughs> No, think she's about struggling. Ken, she okay, said, stop, I like my stop, job, stop. Okay. but if I lived in the city and I could walk there, I'd be fine. The whole meltdown was <laughs> about her time from 6.15 until bedtime. I'm telling you. And she didn't account for the four hours. Thus, this is a young girl who's very kind and sweet. But if you're sweet. used to more hours. This is a meltdown on TikTok. It is a meltdown. But if you nothing. are used to more hours in your day that you can spend... The way you okay, choose. Okay, but, I, but she, it, it does feel like this is her first job, though. It's her, it's her first job. Yeah. She is reacting she's, she's, to like, oh my gosh, I just this hit is, like this is real adulthood. World. This is adulthood. Yeah. Thank you. I, and, and, it's adult. But let me say this: I remember, I remember waking up probably like four months into work after college, okay, coming here, and thinking like, oh my gosh, like this is my this is my life. This is my life for the next. 40 years or however long like every point up until then there's a transition right yeah. elementary school to middle school to right. high school there's something new and and you wake up in this like daunting adult brain where you think this is okay this is my life forever and i remember getting home watching wheel of fortune at 6 30 and at seven o'clock i was tired no i wasn't on tiktok <laughs> crying like i knew like i have bills to pay like we have to work we're adults here but I do think it is. I get you're it. Tired. I think so too. You're tired. Please I, tell me you're tired. You get tired. You're 100%. tired. hundred <laughs> percent. Last night, my two teenage boys were out of the house with friends. Josie, our, our youngest, had a, a friend upstairs. I was in the living room watching the football game and completely snoring totally. in between. like wake. So I get it. That's not what this video is about. Uh, but I do this think... video is, hold on a second. You guys think I'm so mean. You're, I'm not. You're being, you're being curmudgeon <laughs> Uh, the curmudgeon. When, since when did having common sense make you a curmudgeon? Well, no. then does. guilty as charged because this gal is freaking out over the amount of time she has between getting home from work and going to bed. But I she know. may be. That's also, what this is about. She yeah. is freaking out, but she also could be learning something about how she's. She could be. I'm not saying she is. She could be learning something about how she's what she's bent towards. Because I do think some people are more bent towards. I can go to a nine to five job. I can punch my clock. I can be there from whatever, eight to four, nine to five, whatever. And it doesn't bother me. And I get used to it. Great. Fine. And then other people are like, I need to work for myself. I need to be able to set my schedule. Then she should I need do to that. be able to start and stop. She could be like, oh my gosh, if this is the world, like I can't do it. She could be doing that. All right. Let I'm me take saying. another, I'd like to Here's take another, another angle. Though. But, but, but even Jade, let me say this, not against this girl. I'm ready for another angle. But okay. But, but I'm just saying if you had to and didn't have a choice, you got to work. Yeah, you wouldn't necessarily probably be melting down. 
Here's an idea. You're saying if she, if she had no other options and this is what she had to do, you, you, there's a gum, like you, you would have to find that inner strength. She doesn't have another option. Like you gotta work. Yeah. That's right. That's right. You gotta work. Let me, let me take another tack. Okay. Okay. All right. Let me just not be a curmudgeon for a second. All right. <laughs> let me let me put on. The, I think most of America is probably agreeing with you. Of course, we're they playing are. devil's advocate. They, they almost always do. But anyway, <laughs> here's the thing. Let me take the caring dad hat for a moment. Okay, take the caring right. dad. I understand, sweetheart. This is a real shock to your system. All the things that Sister Jade and Sister Rachel said. They love you. They're your older sister sisters. Sister or sister? You would be sister <laughs> with a U H or an A only. I get it. Here's the point. If you're struggling like this, call your friend. Uh, listen to a Taylor Swift song. Stop. Uh, talk to mom Stop and dad. Kidding. Don't go on TikTok and melt down. Stop True with that. me. She I'm going to share every. I'm not because let me tell you something. I got some <laughs> crazy thoughts in my head. I don't want anybody to know. I sure as <laughs> he double hockey stick. I'm not going on TikTok <laughs> going. I'm wildly insecure and I'm anxious Aww. and I'm melting down. Well, let me just tell you, I what, edited some things out that were even more personal. So Wait, that's what? the. I edited some things out that were even more personal oh, so wow. that was the edited version that's oh. right you did i have seen and i know yes we, so what did. i'm saying is as the dad can we yes. stop sharing our souls on tiktok now that ken is very good we very good we all deserve we a chance to melt down yes but for yes. god's sake do it in private with, your, with a friend <laughs> with somebody safe get I, with jesus I yes do. now <laughs> we're talking about this poor girl on a huge show and i don't i, I don't i don't, I don't I mean know. her any ill will at all because no. i'd actually go oh i want to give you a hug i get it life is hard this does suck yeah either move into the city later yeah. when you could afford yes. it or let's get a job where we don't have to commute because commuting yeah, is a real suck. stress yeah i, I don't want to in any way minimize the commute but you know look you get home at 6 15 maybe you don't take a three-hour shower <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, or maybe you work out at five. Maybe at eat five. on the train. Yeah. Maybe get up at five thirty. Work out. I, I don't know. Lots There's of things we can do. do. There's a way to do it. And I will say this: it's a cry after for having help. multiple children sitting here, all of us. Yes. We probably can adjust more. Yeah. By That's the way, right. and she's kidding, brand new. It makes you. It yeah. makes you adjust. They yeah. don't know tired. No. Having multiple kids is tired to the bone. Can I get an amen? amen? Amen. There it is. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is the Ramsey Show. Hey folks, you know that sinking feeling when you make an offer on a house you love and then you hear there's another offer? You need the Churchill Mortgage Home Buyer Edge. Super fast pre-approval and a secured interest rate. Plus a $5,000 seller guarantee gives your offer the best chance of being accepted. The Home Buyer Edge from Churchill gives you an advantage over those other guys. Go to churchillmortgage.com today to learn more. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I am Ramsey Person I, Rachel Cruz, hosting this hour with Ramsey Person I, Jade Warshaw. And we brought our other fellow Ramsey Person I, Ken Coleman, by. Big bro. Big bro stopped in. Yes. Just big, walking big, through the halls. Brother, Nothing we, to do. We waved him in yeah. because we had a reaction video last segment. <laughs> and we just love Ken. And we said, you we'll know what? We'll keep him. Why Aww, don't you stay one more segment. So fun. And help answer a few of these calls coming in. So let's go to Kyle in Macon, Georgia. Hey, Kyle. Welcome to the show. Hey, Rachel. Hey, Jay. Hey, Ken. Thanks so much for taking the call today. Absolutely. How can we help? So uh, just, a, I guess, a little backstory. My, my wife's a teacher. Um, we live in one county, and she teaches in another. 
Um, we're currently uh, new to the the whole uh, baby steps thing, but we're all in. We've signed up for Ramsey Plus. We've got every dollar premium. We've got everything awesome. set up. Wow. We're starting our budget. Um, so we're 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 going hard. Um, but uh, we're we're kind of future thinking, and so we're considering whether to uh, when we get to baby step four, pay off our current house completely uh, as we're kind of working through the four, five, and six, or just pay off enough as a down payment for a new house in the county where she teaches. Now, the reason behind it is because it's going to cost us about $2,500 a year per child to send them across county lines to a school where she teaches at. Um, so we're kind of trying to figure out what's what's the, the best option to be more financially prudent for our family's future. Okay. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great question. So your wife, she's teaching in the county over. And so you're just, I want to clarify, make sure I got the question correct that you guys are trying to decide okay once we get to baby steps four five and six should we just go ahead and move or pay off our house in full in the county that you're in correct yeah so we want to yeah determine whether we want to pay off here before moving or you just pay off enough to move um to where we can move into a house with all the prerequisite 20 percent down yeah 15 year face doing all that quick question what's the benefit of moving the kids to the new school district just to be in the same school as mom or is it a better school district uh, it's a better school district. So we're kind of on the outskirts of the the town. So Warner Robins is the greater area and Houston County is the county that it's in. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we're we're literally like a mile from the border of Houston County. So but we're, we just happen to not be a part of it. I probably would then I'd once you get to baby steps four, five and six, I'd continue to pay extra towards the mortgage just like you normally would because it's still a forced savings account. And when you get ready to move and you sell your home and you receive that equity, that would be your down payment on your next home. That's probably what I would do. Yeah. How if, much? Oh, sorry. How much debt do you do you guys have to pay off? Um, so we're at about one hundred and thirty thousand, uh, and we make one hundred and fifty a year. Okay. So how have you guys mapped out the timeline on when you think you'll have it paid off? Yeah, so we're we're currently looking at May of 2026. Um, I'm actually about to start a uh, side hustle with a friend of mine doing web development and software development. Oh, good for you. Um, and and hopes to kind of make some extra money to help get this done quicker. Okay, but that has the kids in that school for two more years. Do you guys want to move sooner than that? Well, so they're not in school yet. So our oh, youngest, okay. our, our only child currently is about to be two. And then we have one on the way who's doing that. Oh, okay. okay. So you guys have yeah. some time. Okay, that's great. That's, yeah, that's yeah. good. So we have, yeah, we have the, uh, Daniel, our younger, our only child right now, will not even start for at least three years. So by the time we even get to where he's starting school, we won't, uh, we'll, we'll be done out of, out of consumer debt. <sighs> Gotcha. Um, but just trying to figure out yeah, you know, so, how much time do we give ourselves? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I would definitely still be putting money towards paying off your house, just like Jade said. And then when you guys get to the point that you're like, hey, we're going to move for schools, you start looking. And then when you sell your house, all that equity can roll down into a down payment. And you may have to still take out a small mortgage, um, especially if your house isn't paid off where you guys currently are, which it probably won't be. Um, but yeah, that, yeah. That, that's what I would do. Just like Jade said, it's kind of a forced yeah. savings. You're not losing anything by doing that. Do awesome. you see that? <laughs> So what? It, yeah. What it, so it, so I guess that I, that was really our our biggest thing was is it when we do decide to move it's going to be is it worth five thousand dollars a year to make the move and you know get into a new mortgage versus just paying the five thousand dollars a year. What's to, the five thousand dollars a year? I, am I it's missing to that? Pay so it's to pay for the, the kids going out of district. I see. So here's the question: yeah. You yeah. already answered one power. One part of this is the school system's better where your wife teaches, and that's better for the kids, presumably. Yes, you check that box. Yes. All right. Yeah. So the question is: If the school system that your wife teaches in that you want to send the kids to was in the same place your house was, would you be moving houses? Uh, yeah, I mean, you I, would. We, we would. Yeah. Well, so, well, no, if we were if meaning we were you'd stay in the house. Early. Yeah. So which is more important to you staying in the house that you're in now that it's paid off or it will be paid off or uh, saving the five thousand dollars living in a different house. But the kids are in the district because I think that becomes the ultimate question yeah. for me. I'd pay the five thousand a year if I really love the house. Yeah, that's because point, now I Ken. get the best of both worlds. So what what's important to you? What's the most important, the house or the kids in the school district? 
Yes, yeah, and I think for us it'd probably be the house just because we're, we're the only reason we moved into this house was just because we had we, we used USBA and didn't have any down and at the time we know and now we look at Ramsey we know it's not really smart. But so here's we, the deal: we've, that's a line item for you now, Mike. When the kids are in yeah. school, the five thousand dollars that's your line item. And it'll be twenty five hundred at first, right? For yeah, one kid, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, it'll be twenty five hundred then. Years. I mean, we're all here. We're all parents here. Ken, you have older kids than us, but also Kyle, my kids, they're, they're in public school. And I will say one of the gifts of it that we have found is that all the kids are zoned for that school, for our elementary school, for the middle school and high school in surrounding areas. So all my kids, friends all live in the neighborhood next to us and all of it. So there's like a community that's mm-hmm. built. So I could see mm-hmm. you guys when they enter, you know, maybe late elementary school yeah. to be like, gosh, we want to be part of this community. And at that point, that's another value that it's we a very, want very good point. to add. And yeah. so then we do want to move for that reason. So even mm-hmm. your reasons for, for, you know, maybe you're good to stay in the house you're in until they're in second grade, third grade, then maybe, maybe not always, maybe you guys feel like, oh my gosh, we want to be part of that community because your kids are in private school. So their friends would be scattered they, everywhere. Ken, they are, right? but uh, they're in private schools close by and you wouldn't believe how many kids they went to public school with in elementary school and middle school and they've st- okay so, together, so. I, so Rachel makes a very good point very good point on this real quick question I, I, are the neighborhoods better I know the school system is better it makes me believe that maybe the neighborhoods are better in this other area is that true or false oh yeah absolutely all right so you can look this up Google this I won't eat up any time on this but there is actual data out there and it's why we moved into the neighborhood that Stacy and I moved into years ago. And it was a bit of a stretch for us. We sacrificed in other areas to be able to do it. Uh, but there's data out there that the, the nicer the neighborhood, the wealthier the people, the more successful people. And that ends up really helping your kids long-term relationships. They're around other successful families. There's something to that. It's not a guarantee. It's not a silver bullet. Don't read too much into that. But there's something to be said, not just from what Rachel said from a community standpoint, but also the relationships and how it bodes for their future. You, they become good friends with good families. Uh, that, that really helps long-term in their career. They've, they've mapped this stuff out. So I would think about that as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And our, and our church is, is on that side of town as well. So we getting closer to everything is really the goal. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of where, where, where we're going to well, be. At I would go there, but paying the house off, like yeah. Jade said, still the right play. Absolutely. Until gives you're you more ready. options. Sounds like you're heading in that awesome. direction at some point. Yeah. Maybe if over years, Kyle, it'll probably be a longer term decision for you guys. Nothing you'll do in the next year or two. But yeah, um, but yeah I think it's a great goal to have. And, and again, not to keep on this point, but that's how Winston and I were. When our daughter started kindergarten, we knew where we were. We had five years to say, okay, we're, we, our goal was to be in this part of the county, all of it. And we started saving and that was our five-year goal and we made it happen, which is awesome. So again, I think having those goals for your family, Kyle, is, is huge. And all of you listening and watching that too, just be, you think about yourself. It's not just the money piece, which is important. And we want to be wise about that. But the holistic view of you and your family unit too, I think is, is huge. So thanks for the call, Kyle. Thank you, Ken, for joining us. Yes. I'm going to take off. Gotta always a pleasure. Got let you two busy do your thing. things to That's do, it. Ken. Keeping the world afloat. We appreciate. By the way, buy Rachel's new book. I'm glad for what I have. And money's not a math problem by Jade Warshaw. Buy their books. Fancysolutions.com. Go now. Thanks, so Ken. kind, Ken. We'll be back. Give us a call at 888-825-5225. It's a free call anywhere in the country. And I always feel like, Jade, the uh, <laughs> the week the week of Thanksgiving obviously brings a lot of gratitude and also a lot of shopping. That's right. Black Friday uh, is a real shopping day. And I think it really can be to your advantage if you don't get taken, you know, carried away with it right. to find some deals for Christmas. I know I have some Amazon alerts 
uh, that are going to be hitting um, yep, for some gifts. So you can take advantage of that. And also, if you go to RamseySolutions.com slash store, our Black Friday sale is going on. So we have great gifts, meaningful gifts for your friends and family as low as $8. There's audio gift cards for as low as $8. Love Best-selling it. books like Know Yourself, Know Your Money. Uh, my book, the to- and then Dave's book, The Total Money Makeover, Baby Steps Millionaires, Own Your Past, Change Your Future by Dr. John Deloney, as low as $10. Wow. And Financial Peace University is the lowest price of the year at $59.99. My wallets are out, actually. We have a, uh, a, a color in camel, brown, black, and champagne Ooh. that are going on sale just for this week specifically. So, so many people ask about my wallets and if they go on sale. They usually don't, but we're doing it for Black Friday. So make sure wow. to check that out. So, Go to RamseySolutions.com slash store and you can pick up also Jade pre-sale of Jade's new quick read, Money's Not a Math Problem. So again, lots of stuff going on here Love at Ramsey it. Solutions. We are here in the festivities of Black Friday. So take advantage of these deals. Get some great, meaningful gifts again for your friends and family. RamseySolutions.com slash store. Up next, we have Alex in Houston, Texas. Hey, Alex. Welcome to the show. Hey, good afternoon. How are y'all? We're doing great. How can we help? All right. So um, two forms of debt. Um, unfortunately, I do have a um, car, car note, a um, student loan, and um, here are the numbers. So basically, I make uh, forty or excuse me, fifty-two gross, which is forty-one-seven net um, at the moment. I've uh, been saving, and I actually have eighteen thousand um, dollars saved up. Oh, good for you. Um, Yes, I know. I've been trying to save them as much as possible. So my question is, okay, do I, I know this is kind of a big deal, but like, do I knock out the car if I have 17, nine left? Um, Do I knock out the student loans? What do you have on the student Um, loans? Basically uh, 12,000. You know, I would probably go ahead. Well, we teach the debt snowball where it's your your lowest amount. So honestly, Alex, I would go ahead and just knock out the student loan debt, get rid of that. And then if you have your emergency fund of $1,000, your starter emergency fund, you're going to bring that 18 again all the way down to 1,000. So you'll throw seven, you'll throw 12 at the student loan, get it paid off. You'll have 5,000 left, which is awesome, which means you'll only have, you know, I guess a close to 12, 13,000 left to knock out on the car. So I would go ahead and just get the student loan done and then start chipping away at the car next. Okay. So I also have Kelly blue booked it and it, I could sell and get it for, like I could sell 13, get, get, get 13 out of it. So does that play into it at all? Or like you could sell the car for what? Uh, sorry. I could sell the, I have Kelly blue booked it and I uh-huh. can sell it for, um, 13, three. 13,000. No, I wouldn't but, because you're still underwater. Yeah. Yeah, I would keep the car okay. cuz it's not it's not an extreme amount. Um well, you're kind of yeah. If you didn't have this 18k saved, it would look a lot different. But with that money, yeah. You're going to be out of this in no time. To, you know. Oh, cool. Very quickly. All right. So then knock out student loans and then throw the 5,000 at the car payment and then just have that 1000 saved up right that's yep, what y'all said exactly mm-hmm. yep that's exactly what we would do that's great alex i'm really, really i'm good. yeah and just the and what's what i love about the idea of just the debt snowball and working this plan is that even though you saved 18000 which is incredible um, you know, I don't know if you had a goal you were saving for, but the idea, you know, a lot of people are just like, I just know I need to put savings away. And it's kind of this like nebulous idea. Yeah. And so there's something about having that more focused goal of looking at the car and saying, you know, what did we, what did we say? You should, you're, you're going to have like 13,000 yeah. left on it. And to be like, create 13,000. That's my next goal. And there's like an actual number to it. Mm-hmm. There's something really motivating about that, Alex. And I would encourage you, you know, if you can bring in an extra thousand dollars a month in side hustles, eight hundred dollars, heck yeah, make, work a couple nights, maybe some weekends, and just pick up some up for a short period of time, you could throw a lot at that thirteen thousand and get it knocked out really quickly. So, again, this idea of um, putting money towards that by upping some income, cutting expenses. Uh, I think at your rate, Alex, you're you're going to do awesome. So, yeah, get, I, I'd have that student loan paid off by dinner tonight, Jay. Oh, come on now. Get it out. Love get it. it. All right, up next, we have Heidi in Houston, Texas. Hey, Heidi, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for taking my call. Absolutely. How can uh, we help? 
Yeah, so my husband and I recently started listening to your podcast, and we are looking at our first house and had some questions. Um, so we're currently debt-free, and we've been saving for a down payment, and we've been house hunting for a few years and finally found a house that we both really love, um, and we were actually thinking about putting an offer on it today. Um, we've been looking at our budget a lot and talking about it a lot and the mon- looking at the money that we would need up front, and we had a question about the recommendation that you have for the house payment to be under 25% of your take-home pay. Specifically, uh, we're wondering if you include taxes and insurance um, within that 25% or just the principal and interest. Um, And then kind of tagging off of that also, would you include the 15% Fifteen percent that your of your household income that you're supposed to invest in retirement um, before you take the twenty five percent of your take home pay, or would that be? Yeah, yeah. it's great questions, Heidi. Mm-hmm. Great questions. So, so no, you would you would include that fifteen percent. You would just look at your entire take home pay that hits that hits your account that, and that would include investing, right? I mean, mm-hmm. like it, it would be that entire number. So you would not exclude 15% and then look at that amount as your 25%. Um, no, you would look at your entire take home pay. So that is, I guess, the good news. And then the mm-hmm. bad news is, yes, we do include taxes, taxes. and insurance yeah. in that 25%. Yeah. And not to be, okay. I, I kind of want to add something else to it. Have you guys picked a house yet? Like, do you kind of know uh, this is what we're thinking of? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we actually, um, we were thinking about putting an offer on a specific house today, actually, that um, they're, um, we're pretty confident that we'd be able to get, we were going to make the offer in a couple hours here. Yeah, um, that's exciting. But yeah, we do have a specific house in mind uh, with like a specific uh, price and everything, mm-hmm. so. Good, good. I always just, I, I always tell people the first time Sam and I bought a house, I was shook by really the cost. Cause I was like, we've got our down payment. That's it. That's all we need. And then Heidi, I was like, oh, wait a minute. There's the down payment. And when we had to put the offer yeah. in, they were like, what's your earnest money that you're going to put down? And I was like, earnest money? What's that? <laughs> and then they were like, then there's closing costs. And some of those you have to pay out of pocket. I'm like, closing costs? And then there was the inspection and the uh, appraisal. And there were all these things that I was like, I I just didn't know. And luckily we had extra money set aside, but I always like to tell people, hey, be prepared. I always say when you go to buy a house, come in with a stacked deck. And I say down payment for D, earnest money for E, closing costs for C. And then the K, I say consider (laughs) other things such as inspection, all those things, appraisals. So just know going in. Go so ahead. I actually have created a very large spreadsheet and included all of those Good things. Good for you, Heidi. Um, yeah, that's I, awesome. <laughs> I've, included, I've included all of those things, down payment, closing costs, prepaid costs, inspection. Let's go. Um, the rent to get out of our apartment in the next few months, um, moving expenses. Um, my husband actually has a 401k that we're trying to – um, convert to Roth from a previous job, and we'd like to do that this year since we're in a lower income um, tax bracket this year. So I've included that. Oh my I, gosh, I, I, I tried to great. include everything I can think of, but. Um, Amazing. Well done, Heidi. Well done. Wow. I mean, that's that's incredible. I mean, that's a you planner guys, right there. Yes. And the diligence <laughs> of it. I I'm so excited for you guys. I really am. I think you you have your you focus. You said you're a new listener, but you are doing all the right things and being so wise with a purchase like a house because it's the largest purchase and we want it to be a blessing and not a curse. So we're excited for you, Heidi. I hope hope all the numbers work out and you guys get the house that you want. Thanks, Jade, for being a great co-host. Thanks to everyone in the booth and thank you, America, for listening. This is The Ramsey Show. where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create amazing relationships. 
I am Ramsey personality Rachel Cruz hosting this hour with good friend and Ramsey personality Jade Warshaw. And we are here to answer your questions. It's a free call anywhere in the country at 888-825-5225. So first up, we got Cheyenne in Phoenix, Arizona. Hi, Cheyenne. Welcome to the show. Hi. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much for taking my call. I'm fangirling a little bit right now. <laughs> oh, we're so glad you're here. How can we help? Um, so I just feel super overwhelmed with money. Um, I feel kind of behind in life. I'm a registered nurse. I've been one for about a year and a half. And I currently make around $75,000 a year. That's not my take home. I take home about 4 k a month. Um, and I have about 90 k in debt. And I still want to go back to school to be able to increase my income. So I'm just looking for advice um, and some reassurance on letting go of my savings that I have. Okay. How much savings do you have? Um, right now, between everything, like all my um, investments and my 403B and just savings in general, I have about 60000 Okay. How much is in non-retirement? Um, I have 40000 in a high yield and about 2000 in just um, like individual investments. Okay. And just investments. Okay. Well, Cheyenne, you're doing awesome. I mean, you got $42,000 saved. That's that's excellent. That's impressive. Very impressive. I also no, wanted to know if you're I also wanted to know if you're currently investing still. Yes, I um for my 403b through work, I have 12% going to my investor that account. Okay. okay. All right. So, um I know you're probably not going to like what we have to say, because I know there's a lot of that security feeling, even though you feel stressed and anxious and overwhelmed. Um, I think part of that anxiety is just knowing you have this $90,000 of debt Mm -hmm. looming. And the way I feel like maybe you've combated that is just to kind of put some savings to the side to kind of make you feel okay. But yet it's not. The problem isn't going away because the problem isn't lack of savings. The problem is this debt that's hanging over your head that's preventing you from moving forward and going to school. It's preventing all of this stuff. And so, um, you know, we always say Cheyenne around here that if you're not happy with your current financial picture, that means you can't keep doing what you've been doing. You have to do something different and it's going to be uncomfortable. Change is not fun. And so looking at money and acting differently with your money is going to get you a different result. And I would bet because we have social proof of literally millions of people that have done this that there is a different way and Mm -hmm. not that what you've done is wrong I mean you have saved and you've done a really great job but I think there's a couple of things that you could change here and it's going to feel uncomfortable but I think it's going to make a big difference in this picture Cheyenne are you ready yeah Jay do you want to drop the ball yeah I (laughs) I feel like I have to drop the hammer um first things first I would pause investing because you were like, I make 75,000 and you said it yourself, I make 75,000, but I only take home 4K, which means you feel that 12% leaving each month Mm -hmm. and you feel it leaving because you know there's this debt there, right? So I would temporarily pause the 12%, get that money coming back into your hands. And then I would take that along with my 40,000 in savings. I keep a thousand aside because you just need a starter emergency fund, just a little cushion there. So I take mm-hmm. 39,000 of it along with the 2K that I have sitting there. So now you've got 41,000 and I'd put it on this $90,000 of debt and I'd knock that back. Now you're looking at, you know, a little under 50. And I would then, because you've got this 12% back in your back working for you, I would just keep going strong and just pound this debt until it's gone. Now, my mm-hmm. next question to you is, what kind of time do you have to be working overtime? Um, right now, I don't have a whole lot of time. I work the three 12-hour shifts a week. I work an extra day at a different job. I just add it on, and I'm still finishing my master's in June and January, but I have clinical rotations on a different day and online school. That so you've day. kind of, you've kind of hit your max at time. Yeah. And look, I look, I, I get it. There are times where you get to this equation and you're like, all right, I'm, 
putting as much time and effort as I can. And when it gets to that, you've just got to ride that horse across the finish line and know, okay, this is the margin I have. And I've just, at that point, I'm just locked into my timeline. And I know I've done the math at this point on this date, I will be debt free. And so if you don't have every dollar, um, Austin will pick up and make sure you get every dollar because I want to make sure you plug these numbers in because with every dollar you can literally go in and say, okay, here's the numbers I'm working with. If I do this certain amount by this specific date, I will be debt free. And then by this specific date, I will be able to build back up my savings. And then by this specific, do you see what I'm saying? Yes. Cheyenne, when are you done with, you said you have, um, you're still doing your master's. When are you done with school? Yeah, I'm done um, mid January. So after that, okay. I'll be able to pick up um, like two oh. extra shifts, which will help a lot. Perfect. Um, and that extra job have- that you're taking that that you have, did you do? Uh-huh. I'm sure you did a price comparison versus just working overtime with your full time job versus this new. Yeah, do you get yeah, paid yeah. more? Yeah, I get paid more. Perfect. Awesome. Awesome. Well done. That's yeah, so very great. Good. Um, yeah. So you. I have a follow up question. Yeah. Sure. Um, for the pausing of investments, should I still keep the match at 4%? I would not. I would, because here's the thing, you're going to be out, be out of debt very quickly. If you do the prescription that we just wrote you, you're going to be out of debt. Uh, let's see, that leaves you with 48 left. Uh, could you live on half of your income? Yeah. Okay. Then you're out of debt in a year, a year and a couple of months maximum. And then when you're out of debt, you're going to build back up your savings, uh, whatever you think is, you know, four to uh, three, three to six to months. Yeah. yeah. Within that area, you're going to build that back up and then you're going to be able to invest 15%. And then at that point, Cheyenne yeah. is when I would start saving up some other cash if you want to go back to school. And here's the wild thing. I feel like sometimes, and it's not always the case, but sometimes we do find that people are like, hey, I want to go back to school, this, this, and this. And a lot of people just make the decision today, regardless of the yeah. money, and they go into debt and they do it versus having a little patient, a little bit of patience. And you may look up, Cheyenne, I'm not saying this is the case. You could look up in a year from now, start saving and actually be like, you know what? I have no debt. Yeah. I'm funding my retirement. I have savings in the bank. You're going to be in a completely different place emotionally with That's money right. at that point. And you may say... I think I'm good. I think I'm going to work towards, a down, you know, paying off my house or a down payment. I'm going to keep moving on with my financial goals because career wise, I feel settled and set. Now, you may not. You may say, hey, I'm going to spend another year saving mm-hmm. to pay my way through school, which is great, too. But but you never know. But that, that's the beauty of saving and that delayed gratification is your is your choices change, your options change and your desires change. And so you actually let time do its work versus making an instant decision, going into debt and you're stuck in this path. So that's one reason we love the idea of saving up and paying for things because it puts some like breathing room into the equation. Thanks for calling Cheyenne. This is The Ramsey Show. on YouTube, Jade, always kind of make me laugh with all the dynamics of yes. the Ramsey personalities because sometimes like, I don't think Rachel and Ken really get along or <laughs> Deloney seems to, to not like Jade or like there's all I these, like, these funny like uh, people predict our relationship but I can tell you in good faith everyone we genuinely enjoy each other that all is right. of us we're gonna have a Christmas party with just us and our spouses coming up at Jade's house like we are having fun that's right so we love the people we work with and you know who we love is sweet George Camel yes we love George, George Camel and if you know him you love him he actually co-hosts Smart Money Happy Hour with George and you guys he has a brand new book coming out in January called Breaking Free from Broke so you can pre-order today for only Twenty dollars, you get a hundred, a hundred dollars of free items. Okay, wow. so this is instant access to George's newest talk, "Show Me the Money." You get an exclusive access to an online preview, private event, and Q and A with George. The ebook, the audio book. There is so much there, and it even includes three months of every dollar premium. I don't think that's I realized excellent. that. Okay, that's worth even just 
pre-ordering yeah. just to get the every dollar premium. That's amazing. So George does such a great job. I mean, if you listen to him here on Smart Money Happy Hour or The Ramsey Show, you know that he brings humor, he brings facts, and the way he looks at money has it, it's such a great thing because he exposes so many. There he is. He's out in the oh, lobby. George, there he is. He's his, like, yes, that parents, is all true. His parents. We met them earlier in the break, uh, or we've known them. We've we got to see them down from Boston. Uh, so all that to say, go to RamseySolutions.com slash store and pre-order George Camel's new book, Breaking Free from Broke. We love there you, George. Is. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. All right, let's go to the phones. Let's go to Cole in Memphis, Tennessee. Hey, Cole, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for taking my call. Absolutely. How can we help? Yeah, so I'm 22 years old. I'm active duty in the military right now, so I make about 60000 a year. Um, and I'm in a position where I don't have a lot of expenses. So I, after, like, all my bills and food, I just have, like, 2000 every month to, awesome. to send whatever I need. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do have $23,000 in student loans. Um, right now I have about 4000 saved up because I'm, I've been sending, like, 1700 a month towards them. Okay. Um, but now I'm kind of in a situation where I, I have an unreliable car. Like, the AC doesn't work in the Mississippi, and <laughs> the engine's kind of not working well. I've had to repair it. And I, I want to get one by spring when it starts to get hot. I uh-huh. uh, get a new car because yeah. I'm, I'm not driving around with no AC. Yeah. Um, but I want something reliable. And obviously, I don't have enough saved up to buy, like, a new car cash. But I don't want to, you know, go with another junker. So I'm just not really sure how to allocate that 2000 to saving for a car and student loans, and then if I should buy a new or used car. Okay. Yeah. If you were to Kelly Blue Book your car right now, do you have any idea what you could get for it? Uh, yeah, I think it was like twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Um. Okay. So we always talk about Cole. Your four walls that you want to make sure are covered, which is food, shelter, utilities, and transportation. And that transportation is a reliable car. Now. Um, yeah, the AC doesn't work. I understand that. And and then Tennessee heat come okay. June, you don't want that. Not I, playing. I totally understand that. Totally understand that. So what I would do is I would put some money aside. If you're able, you're able to save six, you're able to save two thousand dollars a month. You said after expenses and everything, which is which is incredible. And so I mean, I would shoot to try to have maybe. I don't know, Jade, six grand saved. At least, yeah, uh, six to eight grand saved. And so that's going to take you, you know three, four months to be able to save that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that gets you into, what is that, a, um, March, April, which with weather-wise is still... Yeah, because I mean, you've still... already got the 4K saved. Yes. So, oh yeah, that's right, that's right. So I, I'm trying to do two things at once here, which I know we don't always recommend, but knowing that you're gonna have to replace your car, it is, it's a needed expense. So you want to be able to save for that. But I also want you to start chipping away at the student loan at the same time. Or what you could do, you could go that route or you could say, okay, I've got four thousand dollars saved next month when I get paid in December. I'll have a new another two thousand dollars to put with that. And what if you just and then plus the money from selling the car. So that's six, seven, seven thousand two hundred. So what if you said, okay, I'm going to keep a thousand out as my starter emergency fund. And then I'm going to just take six thousand two hundred dollars. I'm going to get a new car. And knowing that in January, that starts my baby step two debt snowball payment. And as soon as I'm done paying off my debt, if I'd like to put a little bit more to upgrade, you can do that. Because you How said- like start like so you say get a new car like get like pay cash for a used one or yes yeah get a new one in, no in no, December no. I would take in December when you get your next paycheck because you said oh I have two thousand left every check in margin so in yeah. December when you get paid I take your two thousand of margin I'd add it to your four thousand that you have saved then I'd sell the car that you have I'd get about a thousand bucks for it like you said and so what does that leave you with four five seven thousand dollars and then I'd keep aside one thousand just as a safety net. And I'd buy myself a $6,000 car. Now, I heard you earlier when you said, I don't want to buy another junker. And I get that. This is very temporary. I just want you in a situation where you're driving something. The engine's not crazy. There's air. I mean, yeah, the basics. And then you're going to take and starting in January, you're like, okay, now starts my student loan payment deal. And I'm going to put 2000 and I'm going to be done with it by the end of the year. 
So this time next December, you're going to be like, all right, I'm done. I can start upgrading my car if I'd like to. Or if I if this car is still doing well for me, I'll start yeah. building up my emergency fund. So you've got options. Yeah. And Cole, I mean, with this math right now, you could be you could have a new six or a new new use new to you car in January. Your student loan paid off by this time next year. Um, and I think that when you kind of start gaining that traction, you may find yourself being like, oh, my gosh, OK, a few nights a week. Heck I'm yeah. going to work extra and try to get even that pay off by October of this year, right? Even shaving a month mm -hmm. or two off of your timeline and your car, let that be kind of the motivator to That's be like, right. I want to get rid of the student loan debt so I can save some more cash. And the great thing about a $6,000 car is it really doesn't go that much further down in yeah. value. And so it's gone. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're pretty much at the bottom of it, which is great. Uh, and you can keep stepping up in car that way. So that that is for sure what we recommend. Do not go get a brand new car no. with a car loan. This is the this is the slower process and way, Cole. But this is going to give you a lot more freedom, a lot less stress when mm -hmm. you do things with cash. So thanks so much for your service, Cole. Uh, we really appreciate you. Uh, yeah. So Jade, you mentioned um, earlier, and I think even Cole's situation you know it, it is amazing to me when you can be intentional with with every single dollar and I yeah. love that Cole because this doesn't always happen with people where he's like I just happen to have two thousand dollars a month right. like he doesn't have a lot of expenses which is such a gift and you want to take advantage of that um but but having purpose for your money that's one reason we love every dollar our budgeting app um and being so specific you guys the budgeting that idea I love it Jade I know you love it love this is it. something that you and I we we <laughs> fond over because there is a a foundational principle you guys with your money is that you have to be intentional so whether you're living paycheck to paycheck or whether you're in Cole's situation, you got two grand every month that you just happen to have, that stuff just kind of just, you either stay in the cycle of paycheck to paycheck or that 2000, if you're not intentional with it, it starts to dwindle away. And so being so specific with every single dollar that you have is so key to winning. And all of you that are new listening to the show or watching the show, this is a crucial, crucial part of your financial picture is budgeting. Mm -hmm. So if you have not downloaded every dollar, download every dollar, up, upgrade even to the premium version because it connects to your bank. There's paycheck yeah. planning. There's so many so many other features, but getting this rhythm, that's right. don't you agree? I think, and even going into the holidays with with um, shopping and everything, you guys, this is the way to get control of your money is to budget. I definitely think. And I, I tell people all the time, we have the free version of every dollar, which if, you're, if you love hands-on and you love really having your hands in every piece of it, then- free version's great for you. But the premium, to me, it has these two key factors that so many people miss when it comes to budgeting. They're like, Jade, I'm doing a budget. Why is it still not working? I'm like, you're probably not planning your paychecks. Yep. So you know exactly when to spend the money that you've budgeted for. And the premium version does that. And there's that automatic transaction tracking that is critical. You must track your transactions each day. That's right. Otherwise, you're not going to win with your budget. And so every dollar premium provides that. And that is the key. That's what you need. Yep. So download the app or go to everydollar.com and get started. You guys, we want you guys to win and be intentional. So whether you're Cole with $2,000 a month or you're living paycheck to paycheck, a budget is something that is going to help you. It is a tool and a habit that's going to help. standing on that stage for one reason you're debt free yes oh amazing okay where are you go it. where are you guys from uh, we're from los angeles okay wow. so la all yes. right so how much debt have you guys paid off a hundred and thirty nine thousand dollars wow oh my gosh and how much time 36 months 36 okay. months making making what kind of income 
We started off at $131,270, uh, two jobs and some side gigs. Okay. Um, we ended at $127,486. Okay. Okay. And um, our income just recently boosted. It did. So what are you guys making now? Uh, we're making one ninety three dollars together, go. no side gigs, and um, soon we're looking at a $34,000 between, uh, raise between the two of us. Oh wow. my gosh, so well over 200000 you guys. What yes. do you guys do? Uh, we're um, school social workers, so yeah. we do mental health in the school settings. And yeah. I'm new to it. Uh, I just recently got my grad school degree. Actually, during those 36 months, we cash flowed my university. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yes. You guys, incredible. What, what incredible work that you do and incredible yeah. that you guys paid off this amount of debt. So $139,000. So what all what kind of debt was it? <sighs> Uh, we were pretty normal. <laughs> um, personal loans, um, title loans, wow. uh, payday loans, yes. car loans, leases, leases. Um, Y'all did it all. all. Everything. Did it all. Okay, yes. so what happened? Student loans, sorry. Yes. Wow. Yes. yes. So what happened 36 months ago that made you say, what are we doing? Well... Well, uh, yeah, we had amassed so much debt, and uh, at that time, uh, we had to uh, move back in with my parents, mm -hmm. and uh, we were married and moving back in with my parents, and we were like, okay, well, something's got to give, enough mm -hmm. is enough, and actually, it was during college, I met uh, a classmate of mine, her husband is a pastor, and they actually uh, hosted a S, uh, FPU. So shout out to uh, Rudy Rodriguez of New City Church. Yeah. <laughs> you know, pastor Rudy and his wife, Christine. Yes. Um, so we got started with FPU. We did the, uh, what do you call it? The plastectomy. Yes. The plas Plastic surgery. Yes. Cut up right. those credit cards. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look yes. at that. And then we just yes. uh, opened up uh, about uh, finances because I think uh, that's something that's really important in a marriage, right? Yeah. A lot of people don't have shared finances. We've been uh, learning little by little. That's yeah. right. And uh, yeah, we just uh, opened up and then we started budgeting and we just followed uh, Baby Step 1, got that $1,000 and then we went wow. crazy with Baby Step 2. Oh my yes. Gosh. So inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> what was it like when you because you say we opened up? We opened What was it like when you opened up and started combining your finances? Like be real. It was actually, it wasn't too bad. It was about me getting over the guilt and shame. I actually, when we first started dating, I kind of kept it from him because I brought the bulk of <laughs> the debt into the marriage and I just, uh huh. It, there was a lot of shame and guilt. I made mm -hmm. a, a lot of poor decisions and he's amazing and he was very supportive and I eventually opened up and he's like, oh, don't <laughs> worry, right. babe, like I got you. Like Aww. we're, we're going to do this together. So um, that really helped us to catapult into um, paying this off. We, uh, we really combined incomes once we got married, pre-marriage counseling and our marriage retreat helped and yes. the vows, like just really adhering to those really helped us. So, wow. Now we're plus, here. Plus I saw the potential in my wife. She was great since before I even, we even started mm -hmm. going out. She was just great. And see? I was like, you know what? That's, that's my person. We gonna uh, do this. See? I'm talking Gosh. about wow <laughs> so great because you guys I mean $139,000 is no joke like we're not talking no. about $30,000 of debt mm -hmm. 139,000 so what all did you do because you said you guys are you guys work um, with mental health in yes. the school district yes. but you must have picked up some side hustles and all of it so tell us your workload because I know it was a lot oh yeah um uber eats Postmates, tutoring, front desk support, night shifts, you name wow. it. Right. I even uh, did a desktop support on the side. So uh, before I started mental health, because um, I just recently started like like this year, uh, I used to do a desktop support for an um, aerospace company. But then on the side, I would do like helping my friend set up his DJ booth. Wow, Any, uh, yeah. anything and everything. Anything. Yes. yes. So yes. how many hours would you say at the most? Because when we talk to people and we say, hey, do some side hustles and all mm -hmm. this. And some people are like, oh, gosh, gosh, you guys are the prime example of going big or yes. going home. So how what like at the highest point, how many hours were you working? Probably about 
right under 70, probably wow. between 65 each, and each. 70. Yes, yeah. each, each. See, this, this right here, this yes. is what it takes. And to, not forever. To get to your shirt. And, and, <laughs> yes. Straight out of baby step two. Yes. And, and again, we're not saying to work 70 hours a week for your life. No. That's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. right. But for a season, and it probably wasn't even that for 36 months, right? But at the peak, yep. that was that was the most. Yes. That wow. was the most. Oh my gosh, Which, you guys, you're incredible. I got to know, because my husband and I, we did this the side hustle thing. Yes. And there's always one that you hate, right? There's the one that you're like, mm. all right, I got to go do it. <laughs> what was the one that you were like, I when I let this one go, I am free. I got this one. This is uh, <laughs> this knows. was a front desk support, and it was a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mm. Oh. I left my um, nine to five, my salary job, and I would be miserable. I hated it, Girl. but I knew we we had to do it in order to to move forward. Wow. I remember I used to take her and pick her up every night. Oh wow. my mm -hmm. gosh, just. I was so sleepy. Oh, oh yes. So amazing, you <laughs> but guys. But you're here. You hit yes, the finish I know. line. So how, how does it feel? How does it feel to be completely debt-free? Amazing. Yes. I mean, we can uh, pay for a Nashville trip and Let's not have go. to worry about it. <laughs> yes, yes. Yep. Um, I just, it's just freeing. It's mm -hmm. so peaceful and... Um, such an accomplishment it is yeah it like feels like you're being choked constantly but now you can breathe again mm. yes so yes. good you guys so what mm -hmm. would you say the key to getting out of debt is uh definitely a lot of love and communication and um empathy and understanding mm. yeah so good you guys no if you have anything no, i agree communication yeah. is key yeah because working together as a married couple, kind of like what yeah. you were pointing out earlier, it is it is so crucial. Yeah, so important. So crucial. Well, you guys, you're incredible. I'm proud Thank of you. Absolutely amazing. You are the prime example of what it looks like to sacrifice to come up against numbers like this, $139,000 and paying it off in 36 months. Okay. Absolutely incredible. So Edwin and Carla, well done. We're going to give you the live and give bundle to be able to take some of that home with you. You can mm -hmm. give some away. And we are so excited to celebrate with you. So we have Edwin and Carla from Los Angeles who paid off $139,000 in 36 months, making $131,000 to one twenty-seven dollars during this journey count it down let's hear your debt-free scream one two three we're, we're debt-free debt -free. <laughs> right. amazing oh, oh that's amazing great. they you took their time the, with it you can see the relief see the relief how incredible so good i mean that's it jade and and, and that's where I'm just like, you can't, I know people have, you know, different stories, different life circumstances, but at the end of the day, if you choose to do it, and for 36 yep. months, you and Sam are proof of that, Edwin and Carla are proof Edwin of that. Edwin and Carla. Are absolutely incredible, absolutely incredible. We are cheering them on, and we're cheering all of you on. If you're listening or watching this, and you think, I don't, I don't know if I can do that, you can look at them as examples to say, it's possible. We see it every day. It is possible. This is The Ramsey Show. Our scripture of the day comes from Psalm 86, 11. Teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. Serena Williams said, I am lucky that whatever fear I have inside of me, my desire to win is always stronger 
That's winning. That's so good. Oh my gosh. Because that fear is real. I mean, of in all course. of it, there's the fear of change, of doing something new, whatever's in front of you, thinking, oh my gosh, is this possible? But that desire to win. It's stronger. Love it. Love it. Love it. All right. Next up, we have Joanne in New Jersey. Hi, Joanne. Welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? Doing well. How can we help? Well, um, we're, my, my family and I are facing a serious issue. Uh, my husband owns a commercial, uh, a, a business, a small business with trucks and um, we're, we're actually um, facing repossession. And right now our income is not bringing enough in to cover the cost of our past due balance. Okay. Um, right now I'm in school. He, um, right now we were depending on the income for the business as well as my part time. So I just wanted to know like, what options do we have? You said trucks. Is there multiple trucks? Like, what kind of business is it? it no, it's, it's actually one truck. It's a commercial truck. Okay, so he's like a truck. Semi-truck. Semi-truck, okay. okay. And you said there's a past due balance. What is the balance? Um, the past due balance is about 16000 Mm-hmm. And the- I'm just trying to get to the root of the problem. What has caused? What has caused it to get to that point? Is it... He's just not getting the work in order to bring in the money or is it he's bringing in the money, but we've got all these bills and this is just keeps getting pushed to the back of the line. Can you kind of lay out what's been going on? Sure. Um, well, uh, he, he did suffer an injury um, in the beginning of the year, which caused him he was unable to drive. Um, even when we did hire it, whatever happened, we we lost a lot of our like we lost employees. Um, where they were not able to, I guess, keep up. Um, so the truck has been sitting around for a little bit too. So that's another issue why we why we did become behind. We actually had a job where um, we did not get paid for that um, for that job, which kind of set us back too. Okay, so how long has it been where it's like basically there's not money coming in? He's not able to do the jobs. You're in school, how long has that been? I believe six months. Okay. And that's just an estimate. Okay. So right now you guys are in crisis mode because it's kind of like, I, it feels like you guys were like, something's going to give here, something's going to give here, and it never did. And so now you right. guys, you guys have got to do some serious, something serious here. So... The truck right. is sixteen thousand dollars behind. What ha- what have they said? Like, when is the deadline of hey, we're coming in to get this thing? Um, I, I believe at the end of the month they'll mm-hmm. probably come take the truck. So, how much do you guys owe on it, Joanne? The full balance, I believe it's about seventy eight thousand. Okay. Um, and and coming up with yeah, this amount of money, I'm. Is there, because I mean, Absolutely. whatever we can do for it not to be repossessed, because then you just start from, you're starting from scratch. Yeah, from scratch. Have you looked into selling it? Um, we've tried selling it, um, but again, that's, that's, um, it, the options are very limited. Either, you know, we don't have any, buy, any, any interest, or um, we haven't had any luck with selling it. So, no. Ha- how, what have you got? What has been your attempt to sell it? Um, my husband actually have may have more details than I do. I know I've I've picked up some information from him, uh-huh. but I think he he's asked family friends. Um, I think he's actually gone to several businesses and offered um, to sell, but no buyers. What is the amount that you guys are trying to sell it for? Um, I believe the same amount that it, that is like this full balance is which is about 78,000 or what it's whatever it's worth. Okay. I here's what I would do. Um and you have no money sitting around, nothing you can sell, nothing you can Like do you have two two other vehicles? Uh just our personal vehicles, one which I get to work and to to school or my regular activities and for him the same. Okay, and what are those what are both of those worth? 
I'm just trying to get um, your numbers. I'll, I would say maybe 10000 a piece. Okay. It's only two vehicles. And here's here's what I was getting at. I was getting at a situation where maybe you get rid of one of the cars and use that to keep the truck in operation. And then over the next few months, you save up cash and buy another little beater that one of you drives. That's an option that you could look into. Um, how old are these cars that you have? One is a 2016 and the other one is a 2003. Okay. So maybe it's keeping the 2016 and trying to do something like that. Or maybe you have to ask yourself how desperate you want to get to save this truck. Because part of me is like, you haven't been making any money on it for six to eight months. And part of me wonders if it's the right business for you. And honestly, I hate repos because it's going to jack your credit. It's going to, it's almost like a bankruptcy. It's going to just throw an atom bomb on everything. Right. But at the same time, I do think that you get to this point where it's a necessary ending and you have to be like, look, this has not been profitable. This has not been fruitful for us for many reasons that you listed earlier. And there's my, part of me. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say my aggression to sell it. I mean, I feel like that's going to be the the best. And so and it's not just friends and family, Joanne. I mean, like this is calling companies. This is across country Everything. that you'll drive it to a different state. So, I mean, like, again, it, it is putting the the work and the sweat and the tears into getting this thing sold, mm-hmm. I think it's, it's going to, that's really the only big thing. Cause I mean, even with these cars, Jade, but if they can drop the price, if they can sell yep. one of their cars yep. and drop the price by 10,000, like sell it at a deal. Yes. And yes. you guys are taking the hit. I would be trying to make that dog hunt until the day they pry yes. it from my fingers. Yes, right. Exactly. Exactly. So okay. that to me, that's the game plan is what can I sell to put with this so that I can sell this, Get this car, this yeah, truck, even if it's sold a, at a premium at sixty eight thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Take the ten thousand of your primary car just to cover all the all of that, and then you start working to pay off that sixteen thousand that's owed. Work to get a new car, and you guys just start over. Mm-hmm. Versus this asset just being completely taken away, and like yes. what Jade said, it takes such a ding on your credit. So yeah, Joanne, if I were you guys, um, and see if, even if you if they can hold off the repossession to the end of the year, uh, if they can Anything. give you more time. That that is going to be the thing, and again, the urgency that hasn't may have been there. Um, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but to Jade's point of it being six to eight months, that lack of urgency it, it's it's caught up to you. It's caught up to you guys, and so there needs to be these extreme things that happen. And again, that is that is finding that's finding a buyer. That that would be my number one goal. And yes, and even for you guys, Joanne. I mean, I, I there there's even a point that man. You may want to think about for yourself pausing school. I agree. For where you are and getting a job and just getting you guys in a place where money is not just like sucking the wind out of you. We just That's had right. a debt-free scream on the stage earlier. And and he said, he said, it felt like it would choke hold around me. And, mm-hmm. and Joanne, I feel like that, that's where you guys are. It's like, it just feels like the world just keeps is against you. And man, and it's like decision after decision, nothing is going right. And you need things to start going right. But that means there's going to have to be change in your life for that to happen. And it may be uncomfortable to do things like pausing school to get a job, but getting the money, the cash flow in, finding a seller for this. I think there's a couple of big changes that really are possible. I mean, I don't think that this is an impossible scenario, Yeah. Uh, but it's going to take a lot of work and some creativity too to to be able to navigate. It's going to, yeah. But, but yeah, you can't get past the discomfort. Like it's uncomfortable that they're in this situation, but I'd rather be, I'd rather make myself uncomfortable in other ways to get out of it yep, that are going right. to be more fruitful for sure. Yep. We're glad you called Joanne. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Jade, for another great hour. Thanks to everyone in the booth to make this show happen. And thank you, America. And remember to take control of your money and create a life you love.